Hi there, Year 11. So, if you've watched the first video of your biology lesson this week, then you will already know that these lessons are being recorded for the people at home who are unable to come into school to do these lessons with the teacher this week. OK, so not everyone is coming to school to do the lessons directly with the teacher. So you are going to get the exact same experience at the exact same lesson but just via this video method at home. So this is the second of your three biology lessons this week, and it's going to be on classification. So again, in topic B6, towards the end of the topic, one that likes to um, crop up in exams unexpectedly, it likes to just squeeze itself in there. So what I'd like you to know by the end of this lesson is I'd like you to be able to recall the order of what we call the phylogenic tree. And I'd like you to be able to then explain the differences between Carl Linnaeus's and Woe's method of classification. We'll go into those um, a little bit more throughout the lesson. So first of all, to start you off, a um, bit of a thinking task to wake your brain up. Is a fox more closely related to a dog or a cat? I want you to have a guess. If I move my face, you can see the cat. There we go. I want you to have a guess. Um, or an educated guess. I want you to give me a reason. Why have you chosen it out? But why have you chosen which one it's most closely related to? Pause the video now whilst you do that. Okay, the actual answer is it's more closely related to a dog. We can see that from this phylogenic tree. Okay, so they are quite distantly related. You can see that there's many branches on this tree between the fox and the dog, but they do at some point have a common ancestor back here. So they are related, but um, they've evolved over time. Now, there's approximately 8.7 million different species of organisms on Earth. Put that into perspective, there's roughly just under a thousand students at Meadham. So 8.7 million different species and however many organisms are going to be in each species, uh, that's a very, very big number. So scientists need, need a way to sort or classify these species and put them into groups, basically. It's a bit like when you go into the supermarket, you, all the milk is together and it's not on the same aisle as the bread and that's not on the same aisle as the TVs, for example. So things are grouped to make it easier to understand how they work, what they do, and so that scientists can investigate new species as well. So in the 1700s, a uh, scientist called Carl Linnaeus, he came up with five groups that he wanted to sort these organisms into. And he called them kingdoms. So he came up with five kingdoms, slightly different to your royal version of kingdoms. His kingdoms were things were either an animal, a plant, a fungi, a prokaryote, or a protist. Okay, there's a small explanation there to what each one is. And those were his five kingdoms. And he said that things will fall under one of five, one of these five categories. Um, later, these were slightly changed. Okay, um, they were split into seven groups, which then have an order to them that you do need to know for your exam okay so the kingdom is the biggest group and then they're sort of subdivisions in a way down to species being an individual organism so you do have to remember uh, the order of the, this classification system okay so we've got kingdom phylum class order family genus and species so you need to be able to come up with a way to remember these. Uh, Miss Johnson's way is koala paste creates obvious frilly green sandwiches. Uh, mine is Katy Perry can often fill ginormous stadiums. Don't ask me why. Um, what I'd like you to do is have a go at coming up with your own silly sentence to be able to remember the order of uh, this classification system. I want you to pause the video now and have a go. OK, so now you've done that, here's an example. So we've got a dog, um, common household dog that we all know. And I'm going to show you how this would work for the dog. So the dog would be in the Animalia kingdom. Now, some of these words might be familiar to you. You might have heard of mammal. 
hence where the link is to the class of mammalia. You might have heard of a carnivore because it's in the order of carnivora. Okay. Now the last two are what we use to um, state the, the species of something. We always give the genus and the species. So for example, you might have heard of a hu human is a homo sapien. Okay. So a dog is a canis lupus. Have you ever heard of canine? That would be where the canis bit comes in. And when we write this, um, we write it in italics because it was, it's his proper binomial name, so bi means two. So we use the genus and the species. So I want you to have a go at applying this to a piece of text that you've probably not come across before. So if you look in this table here, we've got numbers one, two, and three. And basically all you need to write down is the words you would put in the spaces of one, two, and three. And all the answers are in here. Now, this topic quite often scares people in the exam and they lose marks purely because they see words like passery forms and think, I haven't even taught that, so I won't be able to answer this question, I'll skip it. I've never come across that word. I, I struggle to even read it. So I've never come across it before. Does it then stop me answering the question? No, because all you need to do is infer the answers from this text here. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and have a go at answering numbers one, two and three for me. There is a link to a YouTube video if you want to find out a bit more information. OK, and here's your answers. So the class is Aves and it tells you in the text here. Um, then in our order of classification, it's a family in that particular space. And lastly, the species would be the L superba and it tells you here written in italics. Give yourself a tick if you got them all right. Annotate any that you need to. OK, now you've had a go at that. I'm stepping it up a level. There's another example, works the same as before, but now you've got five different numbers to fill in. So pause the video now and see if you can write what you think should go in those five spaces for me. And here's your answers. Mark them, correct any that you need to. Give yourself a tick if you got them all right. OK, so there's one more little bit to add. Almost 300 years after Linnaeus's classification system, scientists have developed new technology. You know, these microscope things, they sort of came into play and we could start to see inside organisms what they were made up of. Now, this, therefore, led to scientists saying, actually, we could do with a slight little tweak to this classification system. So Carl Woes came up with this slight little tweak. Can you spot the difference between Linnaeus's and Woes's classification systems? OK, you might have noticed that uh, Woes added the word domain at the top of, cla of Linnaeus's classification uh, system. And he didn't just add that one word, it went a little bit further than that. So he detailed that the domain be split into three separate groups. So those groups, things would fall in either under bacteria, archaea or eukaryota. And I'll explain a little bit more about them now. So what I'd like you to do is give yourself subheadings of those three things, archaea, bacteria and eukaryota, please. Leave three to four lines between them because I'm going to give you some facts and I'd like you to jot down a fact about each one. There is a video if you'd like further information at the link at the bottom. Okay, so archaea. This is thought to be the very, very first type of bacteria, we call it primitive, first type of bacteria that lived on the planet. Okay. They are different to the bacteria that we've got today. So they would be our prokaryotic cells. Um, and they're very, very basic to the point where they were on Earth probably before much of the life forms. They were first found in very, very extreme places, such as somewhere that's really, really salty 
or somewhere that's really, really hot or even really, really cold, something where today's life normally would not exist. But the archaea, we call them an extremophile because they can exist in extreme conditions. Bacteria, as you know them today, we call them true bacteria now because now we've got that distinguish or the, the distinguishing point between that and archaea. And they look very similar, but there are some differences between them on the inside. So this is where the microscopes played their part and we could actually see those differences. So bacteria would be the ones that you are now um, sort of familiar with today. E. coli, salmonella, gonorrhea, staphylococcus. OK, they're the bacteria that we deal with today. And finally, the eukaryota group is everything else. So this is actually a really, really big, broad range of organisms, which the majority of things do end up falling under because it's going to include anything that's an animal, a plant, a fungi or a protist. OK. So. Phylogenic trees are something that we use. Let me see if I'm copying up something there. Something that we use to show how closely related some things are to others. So if we look at this diagram, we can see that whales and dolphins are more related than the whale and the shark, for example. Okay. Well, they do have a common ancestor, a common ancestor back throughout their distant history. Okay. Again, there's another YouTube video here if you would like to. Uh, to have a bit more information on that. Now, here we've got a phylogenic tree, and I'd like you to answer some questions on that. So there's five questions. I'd like to write number five, one to five on your piece of paper. I'd like you to have a go at answering those questions. Again, do not let it scare you that you've not come across words such as Drosophila before or Xenopus. OK, you can still answer the question. Do not let those words put you off. So pause the video now and have a go at questions one to five. OK, and here's your answers. You can mark your own, annotate any that you need to. OK, and now we've got, it says at the top right, numbers one to five, I want you to write one to four. So, using what you've learned from this lesson, I'd like you to have a go at answering those four generic questions for me. Pause the video now whilst you do that. And here's your answers. You can annotate any that you need to, give them a tick if you got them correct. Right, that is the end of our video. What you need to do, just same with the last video, is submit your work via Teams to your biology teacher, so your individual biology teacher. If you are struggling with Teams, you may send it by email, but Teams is the preferred option. So please submit your work to this lesson to your, your individual biology teacher via Teams. Thank you.